welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 197. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. And joining me today is... He's no stranger to the show, but he's a new guy on the crew. Yeah, that new guy in the block, new guy in the crew, person, handyman, janitor, I don't know what... I don't know what my job role here is yet. <laughs> uh, yeah... Well, terrible intro and segue aside, we have a new guy on the show, and that guy is Kyle. <laughs> hey everyone, how are you all doing? <laughs> so, Kyle, how are you doing, man? I'm pretty good. It's been a very, very nice weekend for me over here. I join us, and I may actually have a chance, small chance, of being deployed. <laughs> oh, cool. Not by us, right? Uh, well, but you as well, actually. That's the other thing. But no, um, I've uh, been job hunting for... <sighs> I don't know how many years. Has anyone got a calendar? I, I, I don't know. It's been ages. But I got the news when I came home from a clean job last night that I um, have an interview next week for a proper full-time job. So it's like, I kid you not, came home and I was like dancing around the room going, I've got a chance at a job. I've got a chance at a job. Just like... <laughs> awesome, awesome. Good luck on the interview and hope you get it, man. Hopefully it will go well. I'm considering this as a form of practice. If I can handle you, Norman, I can handle any person in a suit <laughs> across the table. Uh, you're going to be disappointed then. I'm not wearing a suit. You're not wearing a suit? No. Nope. What are you wearing? T-shirt. That's fair enough. It's the same here, actually. I don't even know what T-shirt I'm wearing. I'm actually wearing something that I bought on a whim from a, one of the local clothes stores because I needed to, sp- <laughs> I needed to spend money. What? I, I just needed, needed to buy some. You needed to spend money? Wow. I want. I I had an insatiable desire to spend money. I didn't know what on, so I thought, well, clothes, they're always helpful. So I ended up buying, like, this T-shirt and a, a shirt combo. And it's like, and I don't even know what this says. I mean, well, I suppose whenever I'm wearing it, it's facing the wrong way, so I can never read it. It has got a number on it. It's got 750 on it. I don't know what it means. Uh, it's one of those random shirts. All right, all right. So anyway, Kyle... Before we start the show and all, as per usual, when we have someone new on the show, we like to ask them the four important questions. But in your case, you've been here multiple times, so I'm guessing it's going to be a bit redundant. So I'm just going to go for the base two. And the first one is uh, favorite character. Favorite character of the main six, it would have to be, without a doubt, Applejack. I love Applejack to bits. I mean, it goes with saying. I actually have a... I only have one uh, My Little Pony toy, and I bought this at the last um, meetup that Helen Bronies had, and I bought an Applejack plushie, which is sitting on top of my game shelf to my left, overlooking the whole room and protecting me from Discord. Cool, cool. Wait, what kind of plushie do you have? Is it from one of those uh, Builder Bears, or...? Honestly, I'm probably not the best person to ask this, because my knowledge of toys is very, very, very thin, but um, it's just a... a Reasonably big plushie is probably about the size of a reasonable laptop screen. Hmm. Actually, hang on. All right. Let me see. If I'm going to grab it because it's just within reach. Amazingly, uh, actually, I, actually, I lie. It's actually bigger than my laptop. Hmm. It's big. It's uh, <laughs> sorry. I, I just realised that this gets cut the wrong way. This is going to sound horrible. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. It's fluffy. What is it? It's well, it's the official toy. It's My Little Pony, and um, it says Famosa on it as well. If that means anything to you, anyone here who knows toys, feel free to comment. Uh, that's all I know. Actually, it doesn't say much else. Hmm. I'm not sure. Then, not sure. Then, yeah, it's cool. It's cool because uh, I'm guessing in Europe. Well, technically around the world, like if there's a toy store, there's plush available. Because I do remember that here in Malaysia we have the Nietzsche brand of uh, pony toys. So yeah, we have that now for plush. But honestly speaking, if you have the cash, like about a hundred dollars, not including shipping, you can get a plush online from one of those custom-made pony things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember when I was at um, Brony Scott last year. The, um, one of the vendors there actually did that sort of thing. They did a uh, custom plushies, and they had this brilliant Big Mac plushie. It was a huge thing, and I was going like. I really have to buy that. That would be fantastic. But then I saw the price and I realised that I would have to sell about two lungs in order to actually get it. <laughs> but you need two lungs. I, well, I need two lungs, but I also needed the Big Mac plushie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to decide, and unfortunately I kept the two lungs, but it also meant I lost the Big Mac plushie. But yeah. it was like, it worth the money, though. I mean, particularly the custom How ones. Much? That they, How much? It was, it? was Oof. I think it was 
don't quote, don't take this as gospel. I think it might have been in the low three figures. Low three figures. I think it was about maybe one twenty. I think one twenty is not bad, but how big was it? Like bigger your laptop or bigger? It was big enough that you could probably see the pound notes sewn into it. It was worth its money. I'll say that. I mean, it, it, you know, you looked at it and you'd have gone, yeah, actually. That is worth 120. If 120 pounds, uh, not including exchange rates and whatnot, if you're looking at it as a Brit point of view, it's not bad. Well, yeah, and, and the thing is as well is that particularly with them, these sort of toys and anything made by people in the fandom, you're supporting them doing what they love to do and also supporting the fandom as a whole. So it, everyone benefits, you know, and it's not like you're uh, buying like. Like, if I was to try and do art, you know, you'd be getting, like, some sort of hideous crayon drawing. But, like, obviously, you, you know, the people who are actually selling their stuff are really good at what they do. And so, you know, obviously the prices reflect that, and you're not getting taken for a ride. Mm-hmm. True, true, true. Like, uh, if you know a porny plush artist on line called White Dove, she makes a lot of custom plush, and her plush work is incredible. Even Lauren Faust bought from her. I I think bought from her or got donated. I I don't remember the details, but I know she had one. And yeah, there's endorsement there. Oh, definitely. I mean, if if you've got Lauren Faust, you know, endorsing in any way your company in the the Brony fandom, then you can't say better than that. Mm-hmm. True, 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 true. Hey, if if you want affordable, there's in stores one. They're not the great, but still, you at least have a plush to cuddle with. Oh, exactly, exactly. And, you know, if I had a bit more money, I'd certainly buy more stuff from the fandom. Because when I was at Brony Scott, I went wild over the art stalls. You know, I thought... I know what you mean. It's like, I, I went there and I thought, I'm probably going to buy a fair bit. I'll take some money, you know. And I was prepared and I, you know, I'd done all my research. Posters and, and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, posters, artwork, mm-hmm. necklaces, oh, yeah, bracelets, uh-huh. like... It, what what did I not buy there? I almost bought Buck Legacy as well, but then oh, I'd run out of cash. I bought Buck Legacy. I used my credit card. Like, oh god! Like, I don't care. I I I just want this. I don't have I don't have people to play it with. I just want this. Oh, definitely. It's the same thing with me. I mean, I Diane uh, Sugar Dove actually bought it, and um, we played it in the hotel room on the last night we were there, mm-hmm. and it was brilliant fun. I mean, it was. I mean, we got our backsides handed to us, but you know, it was excellent. Fun, you know, and I could see why um, it's as popular as it is. And uh, I certainly want a copy. I, I certainly would. Um, I, I haven't checked to see whether there's a version that you can play on the computers or whatnot, or on a tabletop simulator. Probably, if someone was um, hardworking enough to transcribe it to the tabletop simulator version, too, probably worth investigating. Certainly. So anyway, uh, moving on. What is your favorite episode? My favourite episode uh, has actually always been, ever since um, I went and started watching season two, it is, and I, every time I get asked this, I keep getting the name of the episode wrong, so <laughs> get prepared to correct me again, right. but it's the Super Cider Squeezy 6000? Something like that. Something all like that? Yeah. Super Cider Squeezy 6000 TM Limited. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Probably. So yeah, it's the Flim Flam. <laughs> it's the first appearance of the Flim Flam Birders, all right? Exactly. All right, all right. I mean... I mean, what I enjoyed about the episode, I mean, apart from the fact that the musical number I felt was actually one of the best they've done on the show, was the fact that I, I did like the Flim Flam Burgers. I liked the whole um, vaudevillian aspect of it. You know, it was quite a comical episode. I, You know, and it was... It, it was... I mean, I obviously watched the whole season one and however much the season two up until that episode and loved the show, but I think that was the episode that kind of sealed the deal and I kind of went, I have now committed. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of those things where, yeah, I'm in a committed relationship right now. Yeah, exactly, and it's it's been a long-lasting relationship, and it's been a very enjoyable one, and hopefully one that will last for many years yet. True that, true that. Here, here. Welcome on board, Kyle. Welcome to the show. I hope you enjoy your time here. Like, we just do things for fun. We're we're not horse famous. We do get guests once in a while, but hey, I'll try and do what I can. Oh, well, definitely. I mean, that's all you can do. I mean, they... Uh, Obviously, everyone in the fandom, whatever it is they're doing, you know, whether you're, you're artists, podcasters, musicians, so on, we're all trying to sort of balance out the what we do in the community versus the 
real life sort of situation. And a few people are lucky enough that they can actually make the work they do here in the fandom or in general fandoms their career, which is fantastic. But obviously, yourself and me, we are just the hobbyists. The, yeah, we are the hobbyist podcasters from Malaysia and Scotland, <laughs> to, you know, who just do this because we enjoy it. And you know, that's fun. That's great. That's I like that. I like when uh, people in the community actually go on and take their own projects and just do it for the sake of having fun. True, 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 true. Talking about fun, what's your idea of fun? Do you consider exercising and running fun? Exercise, not so much. I mean, the only sport I play is golf, which for anyone who hasn't played it, it golf is sport for lazy people. Because really? here's what you get to do. Yeah, no, because when you play golf, right, all you have to do is, right, you've, you've got to hit a little ball, but you don't hit the little ball with your feet or with your hands. You hit it with a club. Someone else carries the golf bag for you. You can drive <laughs> around in a little cart. You know, it is, it is incredibly lazy in that respect. I mean, fantastic sport. I love it to bits. And, you know, maybe it's just because I live in Scotland and that and we kind of invented modern golf. But I do love that sport. But anything else, you know, I'm a bit adverse to any sort of real exercise. <laughs> uh, you lazy person, you. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, look, I, you know, I, I occasionally have moments where I go, you know, I could actually go out for a nice little jog tonight. It's lovely. Look outside, enjoy the Scottish Highlands, enjoy the fresh air. And then I go, oh, hang on, there's a new video on YouTube. I have to go watch. <laughs> and gone. True. Gone. True. Six True. months later, I wake up in a stupor in my bed with a bottle of Baileys inside me going, what on earth happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But still, as for me, I do enjoy the quick sprint of, you know, badminton and whatnot. Like, badminton's fun, nothing too serious, depending on who you're playing with. And also, you know, sometimes jogging, jogging's fun. If you guys out there enjoy, you know, running or doing marathons, well, you're in luck. If you're in Singapore, it appears that Hasbro has officially uh, sponsored a run. Uh, it's called the My Little Pony Friendship Run. It's going to be happening on... Uh, okay, it's going to be happening on February 28th at 8 a.m. That's on a Sunday. Yay! Oh, God, it's <laughs> on a Sunday. Oh, that is kind of insult to injury. You know, you've got to do exercise and then you've got to do it on a Sunday, which is psychologically the worst day to do exercise. Because, you know, true. on Sunday you wake up and you go, this is my lazy day. I, I know. can afford to shut down even more than usual and you're going to go out and do a fun run. Here's the thing, here's the thing. This is officially, um, I won't say sponsored. The, the proper word is officially endorsed, run, or, well, it's official by Hasbro. It's going to be at uh, the Sentosa Palawan Green. I don't know idea where is that. I'm just saying words right now. But yeah, it's going to be there and it's what? A one kilometer pony run? And there, uh, yeah. There's three, yeah. There's the 1k, there's the 4k, and there's the 6k for those who really want to punish themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I see that there. Like, the 1k is for the kids. Mm, competitive, you can, okay. So, let's see, uh, 1K adult plus one child, that's about 70 Singapore dollars, child's four and eight. You know what, this is fun, this is, this is fun. Like, uh, if you're an early bird, you register before, uh, the 15th of January, you get 70. And then the promotional price, if you do it by the end of the month, you get 90 and so on. Like, all the information is online. But what attracts me here is this, the things that you're going to get, if you participate, you get a t-shirt. Hey! Oh, you can not You can never say no to a free t-shirt. I know. You're going to get a t-shirt. Like, uh, let's see, the designs online, like, dang, I would love this. Like, I would I would just try and go if I'm not lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, no, what, what I actually like what, in my head about this, mm -hmm. um, this fun run is the fact that, right, this is an uh, Hasbro-endorsed MLP fun run events. Mm -hmm. So I can just imagine that there's going to be a lot of people there who are going to be dressed up for the occasion. Because in any sort of fun run, particularly in the UK, you always get, like, even ones that aren't uh, endorsed by particular companies, you get people dressed up as, like, vegetables and, and <laughs> animals and that sort of thing. Like, trust me, it happens. There's all sorts of strange things that people will dress up at, at fun runs in the UK. Mm -hmm. So but I can just imagine that, 
you know, the people over there, uh, when the fun run's going on, will be dressed up as various MLP characters and, you know, and all the sort of costumes as they go about doing it, because it's a friendship run, it's not a overtly competitive event. Actually, can I confess that I did once um, do a bit of exercise many, many, many years ago. I actually did a um, competitive 1K run when I was 12 years old. Oh, okay. Which was, um, it was a part of my primary school and all the primary schools got together and they did this run. And I think there was about six primary schools that took part in this, about 90 odd kids, I think. Mm -hmm. And I came out of 90 kids, 90th. Oh, but you did have fun, right? (laughs) Uh, I was a bit embarrassed, actually, I'll be honest. But um, do you want to But the one thing I always took away from it was the fact that, I mean, I kind of knew we were going to do badly anyway because we didn't have anyone training us, whereas all the other schools had proper trainers and whatnot. We didn't have any sort of budgets. But the thing was is that I did 1K in about nine and a half minutes. Frankly, oh. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to go like, oh, that's that's horrendous. I'm going like, that's nine and a half minutes. That's nine and a half minutes faster than it would have been if I just stayed still watching. <laughs> true, 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 true. So if you're interested, probably you can just, well, if you're in the Southeast Asia region, especially around Malaysia or Singapore, you should give it a shot. Even if you don't participate, there's merchandise over there. And a few of the merchandises are t-shirts and also a varsity jersey. And one of the few things that I really, really want is a towel, which is 110 centimeters by 56 centimeters. That's a normal towel, right? Uh, 110, that's a metre and a bit. Um, it could be. I mean, I'm, once again, I'm not the, um, Scottish towel expert. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I mean, it's a reasonable towel. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm actually looking at the website just now and just sort of getting a gander at it. And, you know, I, you know, I mean, I study history and politics, you know, I, when I was at university and mm-hmm. you, you don't learn a lot in a history and politics course. You know, you learn more from, you know, looking on Wikipedia, if being honest here. <laughs> like, I know I'm not meant to say that, but there's an element of truth to that. All right, but all the right. one thing I find quite interesting, and, you know, maybe this is just me being ignorant, but I'm quite interested that you've got this um, Singapore website uh, with a Hasbro MLP official fundraise on it, and it's all in English. I find that really interesting. Not really, because long history lesson here, just really long history lesson, but long story short, the language that Singaporean use is English. All right, is that the official language? Uh, yeah, there's there's two, if you want to count, there's three, but uh, the most people use is English, and second to that is Mandarin Chinese, but that's about it, really. All right, you see, you see, you learn something new every day, and you know, that's actually fantastic. Oh, you've educated me, Norman. Yeah, well, the MLP sh- has educated me. Yeah, well, there's a long story behind that, but uh, we ain't the History Channel, so we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> we're the Pony Channel here. If you can't be there, but you want to buy toys or pony merchandises, how about this? Uh, Equestrial Minis now orderable from Amazon. So a while back, it seems that the Equestria Girls figure or toys have an update and it's these mini figures like amiibo size figures where they have opposable limbs or joints and it seems that they have almost all of the main six these figures are pretty cool and they look interesting what do you think man actually i'm quite impressed by the design of the toys at least from what i can see of them i mean i'm the one I'm actually looking at, uh, go figure, um, Applejack. Yeah, I, I don't want to say that I'm predictable, but I'm predictable. <laughs> All right. Actually, Jonah, I, I'm looking at the, um, the Applejack toy, and it actually reminds me a little bit of the um, Milky Bar Kid. Hmm. What's that? In the West, we've got a brand of chocolates, uh, white chocolate called uh, Milky Bars. And in the adverts, right, they used to have a character called the Milky Bar Kid, who was a sort of 8 to 10-year-old uh, boy, who would wear the same sort of cowboy hats and... Um, and clothing was sort of stereotypical cowboy, and he would there would be some sort of daft little plot where the result would be everyone gets the chocolate, and you know isn't that great, and you should buy this. <laughs> and I just and Applejack actually just reminds me a wee bit of the Milky Bar Kids, or it could just be that I haven't had lunch yet and I'm hungry, and I'm just equating her with chocolate, so it could be that as well. <laughs> it could be both, but I'm not blaming you, man. Not blaming you. Well, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I don't know how to respond. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I might have taken off just a little bit of a tangent. True, but still, that's an interesting tangent. But still, these figures 
are pretty interesting. Like, you have been amiibo hunting. They look like the same size, don't they? They're around about the same size. They seem about right. And uh, the prices are actually pretty good. I mean, or at least they look pretty good to me. I mean, it's that thing of, like, I'm looking at it going, like, I think it's about the size of an amiibo, but then you're kind of going, like, but I don't have anything beside it. So you're trying to guess it. But the prices seem all right, actually, because it's, um, I'm having a look now on uh, the Amazon, just to have a wee gander. And uh, this is obviously better if you live in America, by the way, because obviously you've got a much cheaper uh, postage. But it's like $11 new from Amazon. But if you want it international, one of the sellers is selling it for $20 for free shipping. Mm, not bad. Well, I'm guessing $20 because it's not out in your country, but give it time and you'll have it. Because if I'm not mistaken, the British pound is much stronger than the American dollar. Yeah, but pricing in Britain or in Scotland, uh, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, I'll just mention all of them just so everyone's happy, is, <laughs> <laughs> is, um, a bit of an odd one. Cause I mean, I've mentioned this before when I've been on the show that when it comes to changing prices from America to the UK, they are, the usual thing they do is they go, they change the dollar sign to a pound sign and effectively double the price. Well, technically not that bad. Ten, eleven dollars to eleven pounds, you still get a toy. Oh no, no, I mean it's like, um, like for example, if you're looking at, uh, like for example, there I was mentioning that toy there, um, is twenty dollars with free shipping. So that would be in the UK about twelve pounds. So you're paying eight pounds more. Now obviously you're getting the shipping and so on, but it's like that works all the way up for any product. So, like, if you're buying a DVD, for example, and it costs $25 for whatever it is, then it might cost £25 here and so on. And it, it, obviously, there's a bit of tolerance depending on what the product is, but it's like you notice it particularly with video game consoles because by then you're spending hundreds and hundreds on it and there's a big noticeable gap and you're going, where is this extra £300 going? Like, is there something else in this console? Can I open it up? Is there a hamster <laughs> in a wheel? Is there anything there I should know about? I, I don't know. Okay, okay. You, you made your point. But still, but still, it's one of those situations where it's there, it's available. It's an option. Like, if you want to go the online route and don't want to buy it from your local Toys R Us or local store, it's okay. You can do that. But still, to me, this is... Interesting, like, I do have a lot of figures, like, you know, in the Malaysia or in around Asia, we have a lot of one of those stores that sells figures, like the Figma and whatnot. And yeah, I've seen them. Those are pretty cool. And looking at ponies and how they almost do that, this is cool. I don't mind buying one. Like, probably I'll buy the Fluttershy one or probably the Rainbow Dash one just because of how colorful she is. Oh, definitely. I mean, um, don't let what I said be any sort of downer on it. They, they look absolutely fantastic. This is purely me and years of importing games and, like, bashing my head against a desk because they find some way of... Because the UK is stupid for this sort of thing. But still, let that rest. We shall... Because otherwise I'll end up turning into, like, some sort of professional YouTube runner. <laughs> oh, no. No. Those are exclusive things that you can get. You can get it online or you can get it physically at a store. But talking about physical objects, you know the Pony comics, right? The IDW publish comics? I've read a couple myself. I mean, I'm not into the comics as much as, uh, say, Sugar Dove, who has actually quite a decent collection of them. Uh, there's Pony Convention that's going on in New York City. It's called PonyCon NYC. Go figure. And they have an exclusive cover for the 38th issue of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic. It's a great design. For anyone here who likes Batman, you're going to particularly love this uh, cover because it's, um, am I going to get the character wrong? If I get the character wrong, I'm not even going to make it to the second episode. Um, <laughs> is it Nightmare Luna? Uh, Nightmare Moon. Nightmare Moon. Nightmare Moon. I was... I'm damn close enough. Close but enough. Night- close enough, but no cigar. But yes, it's a Nightmare Moon um, with the moon behind her. Wings spread out, looks like the Batman single when it uh, when it's getting sent up into the sky. It looks absolutely fantastic. And the artist, uh, Diana Leto, is the cover artist for this issue. And boy, is that is awesome. Like, I want that book. Ah, it's too bad that, well, it's a ex- convention exclusive, that's one. And it's in New York, that's two. Uh, if anybody's willing to buy me one, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, once I get a job, I will happily buy you something and send it over. Nah, you don't need to, you don't need to. But still, um, the 
folks at Pune Con NYC are well. They they look like they're gonna have a good time. I wish I could go, but I don't have the money for anything. But yeah, this is gonna be a funny show. So if you guys are going to the Pony Con NYC, do check this book out because you know you'll make me jealous. <laughs> oh, definitely. I, John, props to the artist there because that's a great design. There, I absolutely love that. Mm-hmm. And I think this is the first time that they did this kind of cover. Uh, what I mean by that is it's black, like it's a dark shade of. Well, it's just dark. Usually, most of the pony covers are bright, but this one is a bit dark. Like we said, it's inspired by Batman, so I suppose you can't redo really um, front cover inspired by Batman in daytime. <laughs> Probably. That's Superman. Yeah. But still, but still. So, that's the news. Nothing much happening because hiatus and it's early of the year, so nothing much to report on. But, um, you could send us an email at the show at gmail.com, and one of you did. A fan or a listener by the name of CRC Brony sent us one. Well, he sent us a few. And he asked us a few questions. And Kyle, you ready for this? Absolutely, of course. I'm ready for whatever he delivers. Alrighty then. There's a few, there's a few. And since we have a limited time of recording because life gets in the way, so we're going to answer a few. I'm going to go for the most topical one. He asked, what did you uh, all get for this year's Christmas? Oof, are you one to go first, though, Norman? Uh, why don't you go first, man? Oh, right, oh, sure, why not? Um, what did I get for Christmas? Well, I got a variety of games. I mean, uh, for those that don't know, I'm a collector of video games. I love my video games. They are my life outside of MLP. So I got some, and Norman will appreciate this, some Wii U games. Ah. Yes, I got uh, Mario Tennis, the new Mario Tennis game, which is really good. I've missed Mario Tennis in my life, uh, so it's glad to have that back. And I also got the Xenoblade Chronicles X game, which is, uh, you know, we've been hearing about that game ever since the Wii got uh, announced, like, years and years and years ago, so it's nice to actually finally have it and be able to play through it. It's funny, like, I heard that game is kind of a Monster Hunter kind of game, is it? It's got an element of um, the Monster Hunter aesthetic to it. I mean, I, the thing is, I haven't played the original Xenoblade on Wii. I've meant to, because I remember when it came out and saw on Game Station and whatnot. It looked epic. Never got the chance to play it, and now the price has skyrocketed, so I'm going to have to get a copy. All uh, right. I mean, it has got a bit of Monster Hunter to it, but it's a very, very good game. I mean, it's it's big, it's colourful, the game pads work well for having the map on it and whatnot. It's a good RPG, and it's RPGs as only the Japanese can do. <laughs> all right, all right. Anything else, man? Oh, Craigie, you want me to list all the games? I mean, I'm, I'm bathed in them. I'll tell you what, I'll bring you a highlight. Um, actually, two highlights. Um, two games on PS4 that I got, oh. which were... Star Wars Battlefront, mm-hmm. because I love the Battlefront games. I've got the original two in Xbox, great games. I'm glad to see it back. And it's really good in multiplayer, actually. And a point-and-click game, one of my favourites in the PC back in the mid-90s, got a new game, Broken Sword 5. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant game. The Broken Sword games are up there with the Monkey Island series for point-and-click games. And... Um, they tend to have, uh, I mean, it's a very witty, they're always very witty tales and usually have quite a lot of film noir elements to them as well. But the great thing about it is that it trades the same sort of territory as the Dan Brown books, like Da Vinci Code and uh, Angel and Demons, but it's actually better because it's written properly. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Uh, so, okay, as for me, what I got? Nothing much, really. I think I got a game from you, right? Oh, you did indeed. Um, oh. What was it? Uh, <laughs> I think it was Ikaruga. That sounds about right. Yes, I yeah. remember. I got you that on Steam, didn't I? Yeah, you got me on Steam. And thank you, man. Th- thank you for the gift. Oh, no, uh, don't worry about it. You know I like gifting people games. I mean, it's the more gamers that are and the more people who are as addicted as I am, the better <laughs> the world is. True, true. Uh, and then, other than that, what I got? Um, nothing much, really. Like, uh, not really... Let's just say that I'm sad nobody gives me anything for Christmas. Oh, that, that, that's really sad. I mean, did you have a good Christmas, though? Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, yeah I, I did, I did. It was fun all around. Just didn't get the presents, that's all. Now, you see, what you need to do is save up some money and come and spend Christmas in Scotland. The Scottish are very good at giving gifts. We are also very good at getting drunk, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but, well, uh, and they also ask... 
Uh, do you have an awesome time? I'm guessing Christmas. But I mentioned my time was pretty cool, hang out with the family and friends, and nothing much really, just had fun. And you? Pretty much the same thing. I mean, um, whenever Christmas comes around, I always turn to a seven-year-old kid, so it's nice to have a week where I can do it. But, I mean, particularly for me, the whole Christmas New Year situation is particularly special because my birthday is sandwiched right in the middle. Ah, oh, I remember that, I remember that. It's... I don't know. Well, how do you feel, man? Like, it's is it fun? Is it okay? Is it bad? Like, what? Well, a lot of people, whenever I mention that my birthday is on December the 30th, um, a lot of people say, oh, that must be horrible because, you know, Christmas kind of overshadows you. You know, when, you're, when your birthday is five days after the birth of Jesus, you're kind of got a bit of, a, you've got a bit of an issue. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I can understand why that might be a downer for some people because, um, obviously, when you, you have your birthday, you get gifts. And if you've got Christmas beside it, maybe you don't get so much. Mm-hmm. What I view it as, I mean, I like the fact that I get one week from the 25th to just after New Year where I can just have fun, have gifts, have friends, family, you know, have the whole party shebang. And then for the rest of the year, I don't have to peak for anything that's coming along. Because here's the thing, I don't, like, I'm not having to go, oh, my birthday's coming up in May the 14th. Can I get time off work? Can people come round? Can this happen? Can that happen? And all this. And of course, if you're thinking about your birthday coming up, and particularly if you're like me, I mean, a lot of people just kind of go, oh, it's a birthday, it's another year, that's it. Whereas I kind of want to make a reasonable big deal because I've survived another year. And frankly, I think that's worthy of celebration. And, you know, getting people around for your birthday when it's on the very end is a bit of a logistical pain. But it's nice, you know, it's just, um, it's good to have it all together and not have to get distracted by anything else. And and then when it comes to December, I can just become a, a lot more um, hyper and uh, kid-like. You know, I enjoy that. I like having that um, aspect of my personality still there. You and me, we spend most of our time, you know, dealing with the real world and all the fun stuff that offers. And, you know, it's just nice to have a month where I can just go, yay, presents. Well, you know, that that's a cool point of view because <laughs> my dad's birthday is on Christmas Day itself. Oh boy. Yeah, but hey, um, he never, mm, I think he's got used to it, like, he's never really bothered, so, yeah, it's not a bother for him. <laughs> well, as long as he takes it well, cause I mean, um, I think Christmas is up there with February the 29th for lists of dates that are annoying. No, like, I, I, pff, I just love that date, just because uh, if you're born on set date, it's like, Hey, I'm like counting, 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 10 years old. <laughs> While in reality, I'm 20 plus. <laughs> oh, exactly. It's nice that you get that little leeway. Although, <laughs> having said that, imagine that, that you've been alive for 28 years, but because of leap years, you actually still can't see a 12. <laughs> It'd be a bit of a pain, wouldn't it? Just like, all I want to do is see the new Superman film. Well, not happening. Oh, oh well. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but no, it's t- technically from what I heard, they just count it as one year, like, they, they don't really do <laughs> Oh yeah, no, no, I don't think anyone's so cruel as to actually deny them their birthday, <laughs> that'd be a bit... <laughs> that'd be so cool though, right? Like, just deny them their birthday and like, oh, you're young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it shows how evil I am. <laughs> Oh, certainly. Um, I mean, you are the monster of the underworld. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to go for the real question that he is asking us. So, he asks, what's your favorite ship? <laughs> Sorry, actually, hang on. I have to grab something up in my mouthpiece because then um, I have the perfect answer for this. Oh, and my. Once again, I have to talk about Brony Scott because that is where many things have happened. Because my favorite pairing, my um, OTP, is Applejack Rainbow Dash. Oh, okay. And I actually got a, um, this fantastic piece of, um, uh, of, I'm not sure what the term is for this. I think it's clay molding, but like, take that with a pinch of salt. And it's like, it's got Applejack and Rainbow Dash drinking cider together. And like, Rainbow Dash is leaning over a barrel and sort of lightly petting Applejack's cheek. <laughs> and I think it's called, I can't remember the name of the piece. I mean, it came with a bit of paper that said it. And I think it was something like, um, Obvious shipping or something like that. The moment I saw this, it was like, I'm buying this. That is absolutely perfect. <laughs> so yeah, um, Applejack Rainbow Dash for the win. All right, all right. Uh, as for me, I don't know. I have a lot of OTPs in my head. Uh, but, um, you know what? I'm just going to name the most that I can think of. One of the few are, I like the Fluttershy Discord ship. That's an interesting one to build on. And also the Twilight Discord ship. That's also another interesting one. 
just to make people rage, the Flash Sentry and Twilight Ship. That's a fun one. I don't know who else. Sunset and Sightwai. That's cool. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not much into the shippings, but the one that I do like, well, there I mentioned them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's only got a fair few ships. I mean, I'm not one to actually ship characters together just because it's never been in my head. This was the first one where I've actually kind of gone. I like that. That's that's my ship. I still find it a bit unusual, but it's like that one is just like, yeah, no, I'm I'm so on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought about it? Like, really thought about it? Like, hey, we're shipping characters that were not meant to be shipped or whatnot, or have show have shown no signs of being shipped, and we're just shipping them. Like, ah, how? Oh, wait. listen, like I know people who do that to people in real life. So to me, it's it's that sort of thing you kind of do, or you could do anyway in real life. I mean, I know people who kind of um like with me and one of my friends, they ship us together, and it's like we're not. Dating? Let me just check. No, we're not. But you know, that sort of thing happens in everyday life. It's not entirely unusual to see it um, done with fictional characters. I don't know which way is more stranger. I, I think the one where you involve real life people, that, that is just strange. I think it's just one of those things that friends kind of do, particularly if you know them for quite a while. Obviously, these friends, like you got a group of, say, six friends or something, and you all hang out together and see two friends hang out with each other a lot more than the others. You might kind of go, maybe there's something going on there, you know, and whatever else. <laughs> I don't think so. Personally, no, not in my book. But yeah, if your friends do that to you, why not, right? Oh, well, listen, look, I think most people ship me with most people. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I don't want to question people, but still, but still. So, uh, the next one was your favorite fic. I think by fic is fan fiction. The name eludes me. Um, could you give me a minute to figure it out? Can you go sure, first? while you do that, I'm gonna go for mine. Because here's the thing. I read a lot of fan fiction. Uh, I have an account on Finfic, so I use it as my bedtime story thing before I go to bed. According to Finfic, I have accumulated about 215 stories that I favorited. <laughs> so yeah, I do love the fanfic. So to say favorite, well, I have 215. <laughs> Pick one. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to recommend a few. I'm going to recommend a few. Uh, I'm going to recommend this one shot called Don't Knock It Till You Try It. By me, pi, tos, me, put this. Kyle, how do you say this word? Those are the letters at the end of a Scrabble bag, right? Um, uh, Mephisto? Mephisto? I have no idea. I'm trying to say it phonetically. <laughs> uh, right, anyway, it's uh, M-A-P-H-Y-S-T-O. It's uh, essentially, okay, what was the description here? When Rarity and Rainbow Dash discovered that they disagree on a point close to their hearts, they decide to settle their differences the only way two mature mares can, by forcing each other to embarrass themselves. So, yeah, it's nothing too bad. The tag here is everyone, so it's pretty safe. So, I enjoy it, and you guys should, well, if, if you have the chance, try it out. And another one, a favorite of mine, I recommend this every time when anyone asks, what's your favorite fic? It's called Sunny Skies All Day Long by Phantom Fox. And the description for this one is... Princess Celestia tires of constantly being surrounded by decorum, defense, and formality, and decides to take the day off from being princess. But visiting Ponyville incognito is harder than she expects. Will she be able to fit in and make friends without blowing her cover? This is a fun fic. It's been read many times on the YouTubes, and I would just say, Go and read this, or even listen to this fic. This is a good one. This is a good one. And Kyle, what about yours, man? I haven't read a lot of fan fiction, uh, but there's one in particular to me that I really enjoyed reading, and that's, um, I might end up pronouncing the last word of this wrong one, uh, The Lover's Edda. It's by um, a chap called Simon O'Sullivan. You can find it on fan fiction, and it's a bit of an epic. I mean, it's a hundred and well, call it 136,000 words. It's ridiculously long. But it's a really interesting story. It has some of the main six in it, but the primary characters aren't, you know, the original characters, which I like. I find that quite interesting. The fact that it's um, got a lot of Norse words in it and there's a lot of backstories in it, which I find quite interesting as a writer. And, you know, there's romantic elements and humour and whatnot. And I feel it was actually quite a good piece. The synopsis of it is quite short. I mean, it just says... Um, Drakkar, a pony from the frozen north, is sent to Equestria to update the maps they have in Scandinavia. Once he arrives to Ponyville, yeah, I know, Scandinavia. Uh-huh. 
the puns are strong. Uh, <laughs> Once he arrives to Ponyville, though, he finds out that there's a descendant of one of his townsfolk living there. And romance ensues, obviously. Oh my. But yes, a bit is a really good piece. I mean, it's, um, like I said, it's a long read, but a very satisfying one. I quite enjoyed it. Sounds like there's a read there. So, if you could give me the link, I'll just put it into the show notes so people can just click on it and they want to read on it. Those are our favorites. Like, I have a lot here, so I'm just giving you the Creme de la creme. So anyway, uh, we have a few more, but you know what? I'm going to save them for next week's show. Oh, definitely. We don't want to do them all at once. Yeah, sorry there, CRC, but uh, we're limited with how we spend our time. So if you guys are interested in asking us questions, do send us emails at the mbsshow.gmail.com. We do read them. We do read them. And uh, CRC here... Well, he's going to freak out with our answer. I hope you enjoy them, CRC, because if not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not. Send us more questions. We are prepared for any questions you offer, CRC. Yes, and also to those new people who might be thinking of sending us emails. But anyway, that's the end of the show. We have recorded for almost an hour now, so I think it's time to head off because we might want to go grab lunch or even dinner or even, I don't know, <laughs> we are just hungry. I'm hungry. Personally, I know I'm hungry. What about you, man? I am. Um, I've been trying to sneakily eat a sandwich for this. I heard. I've been, of, <laughs> I've been trying I my best, heard. but it's like I can only hide it so much before I have to go crunch. <laughs> Professionalism. Yay. Um, i my best. <laughs> Yay. But anyway, uh, like I mentioned before, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thebizshow at gmail.com. There's where CRC sent his email to us, and we read them. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The Twitter account is at the MBS Show. SweetieBot takes care of that. She replies to it and interacts with you guys. So, yay! And if you want to follow me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And I don't know, I just do random stuff. You can follow me if you want to keep up to date with what I do in my daily life. If not, it's okay. <laughs> what about you, man? Well, me, you can catch me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall, and that's where I post all the updates about what I'll be doing here at MBS and what I'm doing in my uh, other show, which is Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, which is on the High on Bronies YouTube channel, and that's where we interview all the various guests in the fandom that do creative things, and we're starting next Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. That's when we, that's when we come out. So, um, so there'll be updates there about that and about little writing projects I'm doing on the side that I'll be trying to finish off if I can uh, avoid trying to not do exercise. Lazy. lazy. I know. Listen, look, I'm a professional lazy person. It takes a lot of effort to be this lazy. <laughs> mm, okay, okay. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook and you can also catch us on PonyvilleLife.com. Links are in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Kyle McCall. And we'll guys see you next week with another fun-packed random episode of the show because i got no good segue for this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you should do, guys? Right? Well, you know, instead of having a slow speed, I see any episode, you should just have a very sunny cut. <laughs> no, that would work bad. I think you should just keep on talking and then fade it out. Like, oh no, that won't work. Anyway. No, 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 it would because you can tell who's talking and you just sleep it out and pass the time. No, oh, that won't work. But anyway, okay. Wait, oh, this is good. Anyway, you'll catch you guys next week. Bye bye. See ya. <laughs>